it's time for another story time with Miss A brought to you by the Northeast Branch of the Reading Public Library and today's book is read with permission from Simon and Schuster. So maybe you or your family members made a New Year's resolution to be extra tidy, extra clean this year. Well, this book today is a bit of a cautionary tale and this book is called Tidy by Emily Gravett. So we hear, see here a badger with a trash can throwing some leaves away. Do you go out in your yard and pick up every single leaf and throw it in the trash can? Well, that would take a long time. And what does the word tidy mean? Tidy means you're very neat. You like to put everything in its place. Maybe you like to throw things away. You like everything to be very, very clean. So our badger is very clean. He is very tidy. And let's read more. Right, so we see some trees. This takes place in the forest. And we see our tidy badger. What else do you see? We see some birds. A broom up here. And of course that trash can for tidy. Deep in the forest lived a badger named Pete. His name is Pete, who tidied and cleaned and kept everything neat. He is cutting the heads off of flowers. He tidied the flowers by checking each patch and snipping off any that didn't quite match. So he wants all the flowers to match. He gets rid of all the other ones. He tidied the fox by grooming his fur. He untangled each knot and each twig and each burr. A burr is sort of like a spiky flower plant seed that sticks to you. He tidied the birds from the big to the small by brushing their beaks and bathing them all. So the birds can't go in the bird bath by themselves. Pete has to tidy them with a sponge. And here also it's very silly. You can see he is brushing the fox with a porcupine or a hedgehog. He picked up stray sticks, he swept and he rubbed, he polished the rocks and he scored and he scrubbed. So this is very silly. What is Pete holding? It is a vacuum cleaner for leaves in the forest. So when a leaf fell, well, oh my. Now it's what season is that? You see the orange leaves? It's fall, and what do the leaves do in fall? They fall. Well, Pete tidied up. And what is this in the picture? That is a mound of trash bags full of leaves. There are no leaves on the trees or the ground. So Pete tidied up, but he still wasn't happy. Now the trees look bare and scrappy. And so to make it all look neat, Pete undertook a mighty feat. Oh, let's see what he'll do. He dug up every single tree. So he thought the trees looked scrappy, so he dug them up. There's not going to be anything left in the forest. But then it rained, there was a flood. So this is very silly. He is in a lifeboat with an umbrella. Do animals really have umbrellas and lifeboats in the forest? No, but it looks awfully cute. So there was a flood and afterward, a lot of mud. And how is mud made, friends? By mixing water and dirt. So without the trees there to hold the dirt in place, all the rain mixed up with the dirt like a giant bowl and it made mud. Well, Pete called in the diggers, he called in the mixers, he called in the concrete, the rakers, the fixers. So instead of, you know, replanting the trees, he's decided to bring in some construction equipment. No mud, no leaves, no mess, no trees. Perfectly tidy and perfectly neat. This forest is practically perfect, said Pete. So what do you see here? It's a gray color. It's a slab of concrete. 
Do you think that a slab of concrete is a forest? Why not? What is a forest? Well, a forest is supposed to have animals, twigs, leaves, trees, and Pete got rid of all of those. What do you think will happen now? Well, I'm hungry, he thought. I deserve a treat. So he hunted around for something to eat. But the beetles and worms that he usually found were under the concrete, deep in the ground. And so Pete decided to go home instead. If he couldn't have dinner, he'd go straight to bed. But when he arrived and took out his key, there wasn't a door where a door used to be. So the animals that burrow underground that we learned about in one of our stories earlier, well, he can't get to his burrow, his home under the ground, because look, there is concrete blocking his tunnel. Later that night, Pete tossed and he turned. His belly was empty, it rumbled and churned. As he lay in his mixer, for the concrete, wide, wide awake, he started to think, I have made a mistake. So, what do you think will happen, friends? The very next morning when it got light, he set about trying to put everything right. So he's got a pickaxe, and this is called a jackhammer. And we've got a rabbit. What animal is this? A pigeon, a crow, a little woodpecker, and they are trying to break up the concrete. So what do you think they're doing? Why are they breaking up the concrete? <gasps> well, then the animals came from the strong to the weak, and they lent him a paw or a claw or a beak. So all of the animals are helping him do what in this scene? What's this? They're replanting the trees. They put everything back as it always had been, but maybe less ordered and not quite as clean. And Pete, well, he promised to tidy up less, but if he succeeded, is anyone's guess. And you see him here <laughs> hiding some cleaning supplies and a little dustpan behind his back. <laughs> the end. Oh, and the author has given us a little message that says, keep your forest tidy. The end. So when I said at the end, keep your forest tidy, do you think we should go out and take a vacuum, pour concrete? No. So part of being tidy in a good way, not like Pete got carried away, is to make sure you take your trash and put it in the trash can. So if you go into the forest and you have trash, you don't drop it on the ground. You should carry it with you until you find a place to get rid of it with care in a trash can or a recycling bin. Now, do you think it was wrong of Pete to want to clean? No, it's good to clean. We don't want to get mold and bugs, but you can take it too far. And that's sort of the moral of the story. Whatever you want to do, you want to make sure that it's not hurting other people and that you don't have to suffer repercussions of your actions because you acted without care and thoughtfulness. So that's a good thing to take into this year. I mean, your parents might still be happy if you decide to clean, but make sure whatever you do this year, you do with care and thought for yourself and others. And if you want to stay with me, we are going to make a fun craft. If you haven't already, make sure you pick up a Go Pack at the Northeast branch of the Reading Public Library. It'll have all the supplies you need for this week's craft. So let's get started. Hello friends, now it is time for our craft. Your Go Bag, once you pick it up at the Northeast branch of the Reading Public Library, while well, supplies last, you should have everything you'll need for this craft other than a bottle of glue. So if you don't have glue, let us know, but you can also, use some tape. We just need it for securing our popsicle stick to our paper. So inside of your bag should be a piece of yellow yarn, a popsicle stick, two googly eyes, which have peel off backs like stickers, a bunch of cut out leaves, and of course, this picture I drew really quickly of a badger. It doesn't look exactly like Pete the badger, but it's close enough. So I'll start by putting our eyes onto Pete. So as I said, these are sticky eyes. I'm gonna peel off the paper backing 
And then you can just stick it on like a sticker. And then we do the other one. All right, so now our badger has two eyes. But if you remember, Pete from our book is a very tidy person. So we want him to sweep away some leaves we'll add later. So what do you use to sweep? A broom. We use a broom to sweep. So we're going to make a broom out of the yarn, the popsicle stick, and also a rubber band, which that should be in your bag as well. So when I put them in your bags, the yarn is in little donut loops like this. If it's not in a donut loop now, what you should do is unravel the, the yarn or have an adult or big kid help you. And then you're going to spin it around around your hand until you have another donut shaped piece of yarn. Then what we will do is we're going to take our donut shape and we're going to hold it vertically. That is when it goes up and down. And at the top, we want to pinch. So we're making a little bundle of yarn like this. I'm going to take my rubber band and make it, put it around the top of the bundle. So try to loop together all of the yarn. And we're going to secure with the rubber band like tying a ponytail. You just do that a couple times. And if this is too hard for your little hands, have an adult or big kid help you. Then what we will do is take our popsicle stick and slide it in to the rubber band. You can do it to one side or you could put it in the middle. I'm going to put mine on the back because we'll take it, add it to the paper and you won't see it anyway. Now you can leave it looped like this or you could trim the edges with a piece of, with a pair of scissors. It's up to you, but I'm going to keep it like this. So that's my little broom. If you'd like, you can take a colored pencil, marker, whatever you have to color and color the broomstick handle if you'd like, but I'll just leave mine like this. So I'm going to put this to the side. And now what we want to do is add our leaves to our craft. So I'm going to put my leaves as like a little pile of leaves at his feet. You could have some falling, you could do, you could put the leaves wherever you want, but we want to glue our leaves to the paper. So if you have a glue stick, that would probably be better for our leaves. But otherwise, remember if you're using squeezy glue, a little dab will do you. So you only need a tiny bit of glue on each piece. We'll put it on the back, flip it over, and then pat, pat, pat with one finger to make sure it stays on. So let's do that now. So I now have all my leaves on the paper. Let's see what it looks like. Now I actually uncovered a few more when I picked up my paper. So I'll just put the last few on. All right friends, so I promise you they're all on now. Don't forget if you're using glue, either turn it and tighten it all the way closed for a glue bottle or make sure you press on your glue stick lid until it clicks. That's how we keep our glue nice and fresh. 
So here are all of my leaves now. I promise that's all of them. So there's my peat. So now we only have one step left. We're going to take our broom and our glue and this is when it really helps to have squeezy glue. You can also use a piece of tape. I'll show you how to do both. So remember, I have just a flat back. So I'm going to take a line of glue and put it on there. And now I'm just going to press it down between these hands, which you can see at the top there. And you want to press them down. Now, if you'd rather secure it down with tape, all we're going to do is take a piece of scotch tape and you can use it one of two ways. You can either make a little donut out of tape and we can stick it on the back and then follow the same directions as our first thing with the glue. Or you can take the flat piece and stick it on top of the broomstick and press down. Now, the bad thing about using the tape is that you can see it on top, though not very well. The thing about the glue is that you can't see anything, but you should wait a little while after you put the glue on until it's totally dry, or otherwise your broomstick will slide right off the page. But here is our finished craft friends. We have Pete the Badger with his broom tidying up leaves. It is a cute little reminder of the story we read today. I hope you had fun and I can't wait for you all to join me again next Monday at 10 a.m. for another story time with Miss A. Bye friends.